If you don't appreciate DeAndre Ayton, think about this. His team refused to make him a max contract player, but he still went out there and worked. He didn't say a word about it. In this era of guys quitting on their teams for any reason, DeAndre Ayton put his head down and did his job. It didn't work out and I got it out of my mind right away. What I can do to rub it in everyone's faces is to bust my ass, work hard, and win games. Yes, I want that guy on my team. But does he deserve a max contract? Well, we're about to find out because there are only two options for DeAndre Ayton this summer. And before we get to those two options, we have to talk about the Sun situation. Last offseason, DeAndre Ayton asked for a full max contract and Phoenix said no. He improved so much after Chris Paul got there, but they didn't want to give him a Luka type five year max. These are his numbers since getting drafted. The big jump, like I said, came after Chris Paul got there, but his scoring even improved in the playoffs this year. In fact, Aiden is the only player to average 15 points, 10 boards, and shoot 65% from the field in NBA playoff history. So basically that means you can use stats to say anything you want really. Obviously, if you watch the games, DeAndre Ayton was not some playoff superstar. He couldn't even dominate teams when they went small against him. The worst was Luka posting him up in game seven. Then there's the Suns' regular season record when DeAndre Ayton didn't play. They went 18 and six when he was out with an injury. Part of that was Bismack Biombo and JaVale McGee being so good as backups. So you can make the case that the Suns shouldn't pay him a max. They're not that much worse with a replacement level center. Giving him the max would just hurt the team down the road. Also, there was a rumor at the trade deadline that Phoenix discussed trading Ayton to the Pacers for Demonis Sabonis. Obviously, Sabonis went to the Kings instead, but I saw an even bigger red flag in game seven. The Suns benched DeAndre Ayton, and when coach Monty Williams was asked about it, he said this. The DA only played 17 minutes tonight, yep. and so he didn't play most of the fourth quarter. Is there any reason why is he hurt? Or it's internal. All right, awkward pause there. Internal? Right before free agency? That is not good. But at the same time, they can't afford to not pay DeAndre Ayton. Who is going to play with Devin Booker once Chris Paul phases out? Dude is 37 years old. Unless they get some star free agent, not going to happen, or trade for a star, probably not going to happen. Ayton is the best player they have. And speaking of the future, I want to get to my big prediction for the Phoenix Suns. But first, let's go over the two options now for DeAndre Ayton. Both sides obviously motivated to get a deal done. And scenario number one is re-signing in Phoenix. This can happen in many different ways. First is the full five-year max worth $177 million. It's what Ayton asked for last year. And honestly, after that game seven, he is not going to get it. The second way he stays in Phoenix is a four-year max or the 136.6 million that saves the Suns about 40 million in that final year and it's still more than Aiton can get anywhere else but I still don't think that that's the most likely scenario instead I think the Suns are just going to match whatever offer he ends up getting because he's a restricted free agent, the Suns have the right to match any offer. So if like the Spurs offer Aiton a max contract, the Suns can just say, oh, no thanks, we'll just pay that to keep him instead. The list of teams with cap space to steal Aiton are the Pistons, the Magic, the Spurs, the Pacers, and the Blazers if Portland waves Josh Hart. I think the Spurs and the Blazers actually make the most sense because they could actually use a good young center. San Antonio has really good young guards, and Dame might actually want to play with DeAndre Ayton. A fan tweeted, DeAndre Ayton needs to do what is best for himself and go win a ring with Dame. And Dame liked the tweet. The Magic already have like Jonathan Isaac, Mo Bamba if he comes back, and Wendell Carter in the front court. And the Pistons have Isaiah Stewart and Marvin Bagley. But if the Suns choose to match any offer, it comes with a huge risk. Yes, they can save like 5 million bucks on a four year max, but also what if that contract is just a three year deal with a player option? Then DeAndre Ayton could just leave for nothing when he turns 26 years old. 
The final option for staying in Phoenix is to sign the qualifying offer. Aiden could just say no to every single contract that is offered to him and bet on himself for one year. After that year, he could become an unrestricted free agent and basically pick any team he wants to go to. But what if he gets hurt next year? I mean, he could turn into like the next tragic story like Isaiah Thomas or DeMarcus Cousins. Now, before my big prediction for the Suns, let's talk about scenario number two, leaving Phoenix. The Suns can match any offer, but there's a chance that Aiton is on another team anyway. Maybe the Suns don't want to give him a max contract to be their center for the future. If that happens, he will probably be on the Pistons, Pacers, Magic, Spurs, or Blazers. Another option is they do a sign and trade with a team without cap space. The problem is there's this really weird rule that makes it tough. The team that gets Aiton in the trade can only count half of his new salary coming in. So that eliminates most teams like the Lakers. The teams that could actually pull off a sign and trade have cap space. You know, like the Pacers, who would send Miles Turner and Chris Duarte for DeAndre Ayton. We already know Indy is interested in the young big man. They need a young center who can set screens for Tyrese Halliburton. And the Pacers don't get talent like this in free agency. If they miss out on a big like Chet Holmgren in the draft, a trade is their best option. Yes, they have the cap space to just sign him anyway without having to give up any players, but the Suns could force it. They could say, we will match any offer you give Aiton unless you do a sign and trade. Give us Miles Turner and Chris Duarte and you can have DeAndre Aiton. Now, my big prediction for the Suns is their championship window is already closed. It doesn't even matter if they re-sign DeAndre Aiden. Phoenix is not gonna win a chip. Look, I'm sorry, but Chris Paul was actually healthy this year and they couldn't get back to the conference finals. Due to showing his age, the West is gonna be so much better next year. Think about the Clippers getting healthy. They're my favorite right now. Think about the Pelicans getting back Zion to what they have, or the Nuggets getting their stars back. The Suns will look back on 2021 and say, we blew it. Being up 2-0 on the Bucks and letting that slip away is an embarrassment. Look, Phoenix was amazing in the regular season. They got the number one seed, but we've seen from plenty of teams like the Utah Jazz last year, the number one seed in the regular season does not make you a championship team. But there's actually a guy who to me is more exciting than even DeAndre Ayton in free agency, and that is Zach Levine. I know that we think Zach will stay with the Bulls because they got so much better this year, but what if he sees that he's just not gonna win a championship if he stays in Chicago? In fact, Zach already came out and said, I am going to meet with every single team that wants me in free agency. So there's a real chance he could leave, and I made a video breaking down all of his options and which teams can realistically steal him from the Bulls. Check it out.